So hi, this is Intergeo TV and welcome to this Intergeo Tech Talk. The aim of our Tech Talks is to make technology tangible and to present its potential. So let's get to know people who are deeply involved in the subject and can pass on their experience with us. Let's talk with people who are responsible for developing technologies, empowering organizations to deal with their challenges. And our topic today is digital twins and their incredible possibilities for municipalities and administrations. And a digital twin is the basis for, for almost infinite possibilities and applications. And the basis for this is called GIS. And I'm really happy because with me are Marco Prisky, Chief Technology, Technology Officer from ESRI Germany. Hi and welcome, Marco. <laughs> Hi. And you can also see here on our panel Dr. Konrad Wenzel. He's Director ESRI Research and Development Center in Stuttgart, Germany. So what they both have in common is a passion for GIS and a visionary view of the digital represent representation of our cities and municipalities. And at this point, of course, also welcome Konrad. <laughs> So let's start with Marco. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, you can give us an overview to the, to the digital twins. And do they really have the potential to lead cities and municipalities into a sustainable future? Or is um, the digital twin, in your words or opinion, just old wine in new bottles? That's a good question, yeah. So. From my point of view, first of all, if you're talking about digital twins, it's not just about the visualization. So they, they help us to understand dependencies and uh, the interaction of all the assets and uh, processes, infrastructures. Um, by the way, everywhere in our life, not only in, in, in cities or in uh, smart cities. So in, in the real world, everything is connected. Everything is interdependent with many other things around. And uh, let's, let's um, take a look to a little or small um, example. If we are try to, to plan and to build a new bridge, then it's, it's a complex infrastructure itself, but um, it needs a lot of analysis for the underground, for the geology, for the impact on the environment. Um, and this uh, during the planning period, but also for the time after. So, um, the bridge can can have many functions not only um, maybe for, for a road it can can be the structure for other utilities um, and um, it has an impact um, for for um, or let's say for, for a larger scale so the, the the traffic flow is changing the plannings have to reflect all the other things around the bridge as well especially in cities let's come back to the original topic um, they are the the interdependencies and the the um, um, the, the behaviors between the assets um, are much stronger. It's, everything is in a very small space. Uh, it's uh, running in, in, in very short times. So the only way to manage all the changes, all the plannings within a city, I think, is, is the digital way. And we have uh, some examples of you know, only a slide on this. Um, so we have to talk about the planning and the operation of, of, of buildings and infrastructures. We also talk about uh, master plannings for the city. So remember the, the limited living space we have uh, to deal with, or um, um, the, the climate of a city. Um, um, if we're talking about green infrastructures, um, or also blue infrastructures, if we talk about water things. And um, yeah, many things more. So for monitoring, we have real-time situational awareness um, for public transportation, for parking management, security, and others. Um, but digital twins also provides an appropriate set of applications for participation, for communication with external stakeholders, for the exchange among engineers, architects, um, and even with the public. So um, we need a lot of of things that can be done with with digital twins. Um, and for this, for this, they they need a um, a, a set of full functionality. So they need tools for building and operating data sets, um, for having updates in the data, for analysis things, for real-time capabilities. 
And today the technology is ready for that. Um, that's that's the, the big difference to, to former times. And that's the reason why I say, no, it's not only old wine, it's, it's more than that. We have a lot of tools and capabilities in the technology to really make the digital world in the same or reacting in the same way as the real world. That's, yeah. that's a big thing for me. Yeah, that's cool. It's a valuable technology and it's, uh, yeah, it's very, very um, important for our sustainable future. And uh, Marco, for you from Esri as a GIS company, um, GIS of course is the core of a digital city as you also just explained. So just explain us again in a few sentences why GIS and geoinformation on the other hand are compared to each other are so fundamental to the digital twin and the complex data tool they are using. Yeah, yeah I think uh, complexity is, is, is a good keyword for that. Um, so everything in the, in the real world has, has um, a place and a time where it, where it happens and it's influenced by a lot of things from the environment, by, by terrain, by weather, by neighborhoods. So we need to understand things in the digital space in the same way as they are in the real world. And I often say in, in 4D, not only in 3D, but in 4D, you know, with a, with a focus on the time when, when things happen. And GIS can make this fusion of all the dimensions and all the, the, the um, behaviors that, that we are talking about and uh, GIS can connect uh, to the systems with the data that brings us all the details on one common base or one common ground. This is the spatial and timely reference that we need between all the data. So the challenge is to, to model the complexity from the real world in the digital space. And we have four fundamental models that we are talking often about related with GIS. The one thing is the landscape information model. We have a slide on this as well, and we can see this. So we are talking about topography, terrain, um, the soil, land cover, and all the other things. We have also a building information models where we have much more detailed information about infrastructures, complex buildings, and underground things as well. And the th third thing is uh, network information models. If we see we have not only road networks, we have also utilities, we have electricity pipes, we have oil and gas pipelines, and much more. And, each of these networks are very special. It has a lot of attributes that we have to model if we want to have all the details in the digital world in the same way as they are in the real world. And this complexity is, um, or the, the modeling of this complexity, that's the big capability that GS can do for, for building and maintaining digital trends. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're talking about um connected models or connected twins. So you are not talking about one digital twin for one city. So they are all working together with their technology behind that. And what exactly does that mean? Yeah, let's, let's take a look to an, to an example. If we are talking about a utility company, then they have to focus on their own assets, their networks, um, especially the utility grids and, and all the infrastructures uh, direct, directly attached to, to, to the grid. Um, transportation planners have their own view on the transportation infrastructure, and it's not the same. So um, if we are going to all, through all the details, and we can see that there are a lot of views or parts of digital twins in the, in the world around us. And um, the big thing is to connect the data, the foundations, or the views on the specific twins together to have a comprehensive approach for, for common planning or for common understanding of it. And the connect is not only one dimension. So we have the technology aspect. We have to use systems that are able to connect to each other, to exchange data, services, and applications. But the connect is also um, a question of user management, authorizations um, to have the connect to and, and the, not only the view but also the, the right to use uh, and to, to analyze data from other from external stakeholders and we have to see the processes to ensure that the right people are working with the right data so we are talking about single source of truth who is responsible who can share the data to each other who is uh, um, yeah who has the responsibility to bring the data into the business process of all the other stakeholders so this is all together this is a 
the key for success with the connection of the data, the services, the applications. At the end of the story, the connect of all the digital twins for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this introduction into your work with, and your passion for digital twins. And uh, yeah, let's continue with um, Konrad. And uh, Konrad, just um, to bring it into a short introduction, um, you bring the world as we can see it with our eyes or from above into the digital twin so that everybody can really imagine or work with it or see how it works. So you combine the photogrammetry with the GIS and in this way you make um, the digital twin tangible even for non-experts. So um, yeah, ex uh, explain us um, exactly what you are doing with that and what's the aim of uh, that work for people or companies um, making possible to work with that, um, what you create there. Yeah, imagery has, of course, for GIS and also in the whole mapping space been always so important, right? Imagery is so easy to understand. It is so intuitive and at the same time so rich, right? Imaging sensors capture the world as they look today. They make it also intuitive to see exactly what we see today. And in a GIS context, author photos from aerial imagery have been used, of course, a long time as well, along with rest of the data. They give context, they also add some detail, right, that we can understand also when they are not part of the model data and with that really enrich the way how we can actually use information in general in JS. Mm -hmm. Modern photogrammetry technology, like we also develop at ESRI and also like in the R&D center in Stuttgart, um, enables us now to take aerial imagery and turn this into 3D meshes fully automatically. So 3D meshes add like the third dimension to it. So giving this photorealistic canvas in some sense to make data more understandable, to also reach people who are not familiar with reading schematic data, but also to maybe capture detail that is relevant in certain applications. Look at this example when we are seeing, of course, aerial imagery overlaid with JS information like right here for the city of Frankfurt, which is very common for many people. Like now in 2D, we have some schematic information that we can access, like here in ArcGIS online. And when we add the 3D canvas to it, like the 3D mesh, which is created fully automatically, you can of course see that it adds an entire different dimension to interact with the data. It makes it much more simple in a way, much more intuitive, and with that also reaches more people. You just talked about integrating data is working automatically or is easy to use. Um, how can cities or can cities and municipalities continue to use their data sets in the digital twin? Or how complicated is it to link the data sets which are existing, already existing, into such a digital twin? This is an excellent question. Because for many organizations, this is the big question today, right? Having different data streams, usually recording data in 2D, and they ask themselves, like, what can I do to actually go to 3D to also enable applications which need 3D, for example, simulation as one example, or anything that needs more context in 3D. And to overcome this challenge, like we try at SV to develop the technology in a way that we can use heterogeneous data streams like in real time, right? As what you see saw before, like it's all done in real time. So the cadastral information in 2D is just merged in real time with this 3D mesh and the information together makes this interaction possible without actually changing one or the other data. And this is really key because if we have 2D data in an organization already, then we also want to update it in a cycle that this organization or this department of the organization actually would like it to do versus maybe the 3D canvas that we just saw, the 3D mesh gets updated every year. And every department, as Marco said it so nicely, right, has a different view on the data. They connect their data, they link the data, for example, from the utility space into this single source of truth, which is this commitment of all departments to work together. And so our duty, like when S3 is, to actually enable tools like in visualization 
to in real time interact with this data together, to create an intuitive canvas for each application individually, depending on what their application needs. Mm -hmm. So this sounds really good. And uh, Marco, what do you think or what do you guess? Um, right now it's 2022. When we switch over to 2030, for example, um, will administrations in Germany or in the rest of the world, Europe, um, manage their cities and our everyday lives um, with digital twins and with connected dashboards? Um, or will it even be quicker? Or Because I think the technology is already there at Intergeo and the conferences, we hear this since several years, I, th I think about seven or eight years, we're talking about digital twins and how they can help improve cities and make things more sustainable and work with more efficiency. So what's your prediction from Esri's view? I think the, the importance with Rigoro and um, to the original question, yes, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, um, we will use uh, digital twins uh, much more in, in also in our daily life. So we see virtual reality is, is becoming more and more powerful. We see AI-based um, applications. They help us to record data, to evaluate changes. Um, in many processes and services, we will realize um, and react to changes in the digital world based on dashboards faster than we ever could in the, in the real world. So that's, that's my opinion. So everyone will access the digital twin in real time, not only via a smartphone, but also with variables. Um, and uh, these are just not nice to have applications in the future. I think it will accompany with, uh, with our everyday life. So when we are searching parking space in the city of tomorrow, or we are looking for the next car sharing vehicle, we are talking about navigation, uh, um, not only by car, but with all the other transportations. Um, or even if we are talking about citizen services, the interaction with the citizens' offices. Um, I think everywhere we will see that parts of the data of the digital twin will help to automate those processes for us in our daily uh, life. So the offices will open their digital data sets, their digital twins, to improve those processes towards these interactions with the citizens. That's that's my, not only my guess, I, I think it's my vision. <laughs> okay, thank you, Marco. And um, yeah, Konrad, one last question also to you in that context. We just heard some areas of application from, from Marco, as we all know, for searching a parking space, for example, uh, using navigation systems. So which areas of application for the digital twin are closest to your heart? For me, like the especially better decisions are like the most important uh, application. So seeing like a digital twin, like a platform of better collaboration of spatial decision making. Marco said so nicely, everything that we do has a space and a time component to it. And it happens. And if we think about decisions, especially in complex environments where many people live together, where many dependencies occur, then being informed and being able to get everyone who is a stakeholder informed is a challenging task. Maps and digital twins can actually help us that. And they do today already. I believe that many cities already do a digital twin today by committing to the single source of truth, by maintaining data properly. And it's just like about to elevate this infrastructure and to grow together in these organizations to be better in communicating complex information, to make better decisions that also hold for a longer period of time, but also to react to change that is happening so quickly as we know. So this is for me the most exciting aspect to empower all these different departments to do collaborative decision making in an informed way better. Mm. These are perfect words, uh, I think, for closing this Tech Talk which was really exciting that you gave us these insights into the future of city administration, for example, today and tomorrow and how we will all use and profit from the technology of the connected digital twins. And um, yeah, I think they will do a lot for us. And uh, 
hopefully lead to decisions being made on even better and above all more uh, a uniform basis. So thank you very much to the two of you. Um, I enjoyed that tech talk very much. So this was Marco Prisky and Konrad Wenzel. I say thank you and hope you will join us at Intertio 2022 and we'll see all us at uh, Essen, Germany. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>